today I'm just going to do a quick unboxing and maybe first boot up of the HSER Nitro 17 laptop. I've been looking for a relatively reasonably priced 17 inch gaming laptop for a while and Micro Center had this for $8.99. So this has a Ryzen 7 8845HS, so I believe it's around 3.8 gigahertz. It's got a 17.3 inch IPS display. However, it is only 1920 by 1080, which personally I'm okay with as some of the higher resolutions on laptop screens tend to kind of mess with my eyes a bit. It's got a GeForce 4060 with eight gigs of VRAM, 16 gigs of DDR5 memory, and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. So now that the specs are gone through, let's just go ahead and open this up. Now, I went there just looking for a gaming laptop with no specific choice in mind. Um, I played around with a few of them, and I found that for the price, this one was pretty all right for my purposes, which are not going to be anything computationally heavy. So really, in terms of specifications, this is likely overkill for what I'm going to be using it for. But I did want a 17-inch. I used to have a 17-inch MacBook Pro. And that was my favorite computer I've ever owned, so I like the 17s. Cool, so we can see here, first and foremost, we have a box within a box. And in addition to that, I also see in here, which is kind of cool, we've got this little laptop sleeve, which I was not aware that it came with. So that's uh, kind of something nice to, to have a little treat in there. I'll just check that there's nothing else in here, and there isn't. So let's place that aside, and we'll get to opening this thing. I did like that its keyboard was able to be configured in a way that the RGB can be multi-sectioned. So you can have four different zones for the keyboard lighting. I know that's kind of just like silly sort of stuff to like, but I personally do like RGBs on laptops. I mean, it's got a nice little black box. Oh, cool. You can see on the other side, it's got some cool graphics and things of the sort, which is nice presentation-wise. And I'm going to go ahead and just slide this big boy out, which uh, maybe I would say that a bit differently. But so first off, this I would assume to be the power brick and perhaps any other pertinent peripheral. Nope, oh, just the power brick. All right, kind of just dump that in there. Preferably, perhaps a bit of foam in here would have been nice to kind of, you know, add to the luxurious nature of, I'm just kidding. So you can see this thing has a big power brick. I do not actually know how much this is. Let me see, wow, output is 230 watts. So definitely very power hungry for a laptop. But, you know, I suppose that's the nature of these gaming laptops and now we're going to just go ahead and slide it out. This is packed relatively nicely. Ah, there we go. All right and that was everything for the box. So now we can kind of go ahead and see what we're playing with here. LDPE foam, and I suppose I'll just kind of go in order, which I suppose would be just quickly peeking at these documents. This is got a sticker on it, so it tells me my manufacturer date of the computer, which is March 4th, 2024. So this is a relatively young laptop, I guess if you want to refer to it that way. Let's see what we've got in here. All right. Stickers. Not quite sure what this is. Is this an advertisement? Uh, I don't know what that is. All right. Warranty. All right. So just sort of that stuff. Got a question about my Acer? I can give them a call. Maybe I'll have my robot call them. So. Then a setup guide. All right. 
Now that all that is out of the way, let's go ahead and get to what I assume myself and anyone watching this is more interested in, which is the unveiling. Wonderful. And you can see the logo has a bit of a sort of chameleon color effect, depending on how the light hits it. Simple. And you can see a lot of these laptops do have kind of back protrusions, and this one is no different. Ports-wise, it appears we have two USB-C, HDMI, power adapter. We have one of these drop-down Ethernet ports, a regular USB, well, old-style micro SD headphones. And on this side, we have what appear to be two USB 3.0s and some status lights. So now let's just go ahead and open it up. All right, looks pretty cool to me and hopefully to you. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and, so this baby was made in March, March 4th. We'll see if it's got any battery. Perhaps this is not a momentary switch, but a... Nope, oh, okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug the computer in. <laughs> and then we'll start it up. This is a rather hefty power brick, which is, you know, not bad. I do believe my old 17-inch MacBook Pro, the last generation, that was the 17-inch. It's like an 85 watt. And this is 230, so much bigger. All right, we've got that in. Once again, these. If you've watched my other videos, you know I have extreme disdain for these twist ties. I think they're a complete waste of time, so I just cut them off always. And we've got a little... Is that a standard size? Pardon me for a second. Oh, yeah, it is. It just looked smaller for some reason. All right, so I'll drop this down here. Actually, first thing I notice is the the power cord could definitely be a bit longer, especially for something that likely is going to need to be plugged in a lot of the time. Now I have to just move this light real quick. Very cool. I'll adjust my camera just to... And we'll move this leg. And it is on. Well, we can at least see that the keyboard is on. And now it's booting up. Now, I have not personally used Windows 11 for probably more than five minutes. So I'm hesitant to just go off what I read online, however. I do believe that there will be a lot of things here that I must tweak that will likely frustrate me. All right. I suppose this will be good to go through so I can see if... So apparently I've read that the setup on this can be a complete pain in the ass. They ask you too many things. I suppose let's see if that is my experience.
All right, so I will have inevitably cropped it here. I became immensely frustrated at the requirement to have a Microsoft account to actually just use the, the <laughs> computer. So I am trying now to install it without a Microsoft account. I'm hoping that I can kind of undo the setup steps that I had completed because I, uh, you know, it's gonna leave me right where I left off, isn't it? Oh, okay, good. All right, so I have the account here open on the mobile web, which is just completely unusable. It's, it's just an embarrassment. I'm sorry I'm rambling on, but really, it's just like, <laughs> all right. Hit shift and F10 and a command prompt will appear, and I shall do so. So we're gonna cut off the internet. To set up your device using a screen reader, turn on narrator by pressing Windows plus Control plus Enter. All right, I don't For more accessibility okay, features, up. press Windows plus U or select the accessibility right, well, icon in the so bottom corner. All right. Okay, so type O-O-B-E in all caps. O-O-B-E. That's it. There we go. And then that is a forward slash bypass N-R-O. All right. And it will reboot. Oh, Jesus. And then I still need to do. Imagine, like, <laughs> if you knew in 2007, say, that you had to do all this crap just to make an account in Microsoft without giving them any pertinent information about yourself. I understand that they probably already have all your data, but just from a sort of, I suppose you could say, I, don't, I can't think of the, the phrase, but you know what I mean. It's just ridiculous. Just out of principle, I... Yeah. All right, so it seems that I am now being given the option to click I don't have internet. Now, I haven't done anything except type that thing into command prompt again and reboot it. So I'm going to continue with limited setup. And hopefully, all right, this is exactly what I was looking for. I realize it may be a bit difficult to see the screen, so. Seems like I'm finally going to be able to use this. This is very exciting. And I do have to believe that now there is going to be a large amount of stuff that I have to tweak within the operating system to make sure that it doesn't nag me when it does get internet access. Well, now it's up and running. And to be honest with you, I think actually putting it in airplane mode and then restarting it is what did it for me because it's on airplane mode and that's what worked. So it's running and yeah. All right, so I've successfully made a local account and gotten into the laptop. Sure, collect my data, thank you. And you can see here, just uh, the way the keyboard's working. I'll kill some of these lights real quick just to see. I mean, if you're a fan of that RGB sort of silliness, this totally has it. And it has different like, uh, uh, quadrants, not quadrants, but you know what I mean. So like this is one section, this is two, this is three, and this is four. Part of the reason I liked this is because, uh, I mean, I have kind of like tiny ass hands, but <laughs> the palm rest was very nicely spaced for me to use these arrow keys. And I'm not going to be playing anything super graphics intensive in this. Probably just Grand Theft Auto 4 and probably just that. So yeah, overall nice laptop, I think for $8.99. It's definitely not a horrible price. If you're looking for a larger laptop like I said earlier on the only thing that I could see a lot of people viewing as a negative would be the screen resolution is only full HD and not 2k or anything like that however personally I'm okay with this because for my eyes it's uh, not too taxing to read so I'll just have to figure out how to keep these backlights on and yeah any questions anything you want me to do with it or test with it let me know in the comments I'd be happy to just as a quick ending to this video, I ended up using this GitHub repo of Win11 Dbloat, and that allowed me to get rid of a lot of the uh, extra crap that was on the computer when you started it up, so that definitely helped a lot. So just in case anyone's going through this as well, you probably want to just look this up on GitHub. All right.